we say to God. Amen. This is one way of saying um, one way of saying we are responding to what God is doing to us in the Philippines. Amen. Hallelujah. Not only in the Philippine Islands but uh, everywhere there's Filipinos. Amen. We would like to respond to what God is doing and we call it to God. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you have your Bibles with you, praise God, praise God. Is that a signal or what am I going to do? Praise God. Amen. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17 to 18. And also uh, put your finger in that chapter and we're going to read another, another verse in Philippians chapter 4 verse 4. Amen. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 to 18. Amen, amen. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fall, and the field shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stall, Yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, I read, Rejoice in the Lord always. Everybody say always. Always. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let's clap our hands to Jesus one more time. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time that we have this blessed privilege one more time to hear from. 
from you, Lord, we pray. God, if you speak to us and capture our hearts and our attention one more time to attend to your word. Bless your people. This time, God, we want to rejoice and celebrate what you are doing in the ministry of Tugon and also in our lives. We pray, God, that you be with us as we listen to your word. Minister to us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody said amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the, the Lord. In, you know, in this, in this world, we have an old song that we sing. Oh, it's crying time again. This is a sad, sad world. I don't know if some of you knows the song, but amen. I heard that song when I was still a young boy. But some of you don't have a clue what I'm talking about. It's crying time again because this world is a sad, sad world. This world is full of sorrows and heartaches and frustrations and disappointments. Amen? But Jesus said in this world, He did not promise to us um, free of problems and trials and frustrations and heartaches. He said, in this world you shall have tribulations. But he assured us one thing though. He said, but be of good cheer. Because in this world I have already overcome it. We have the reasons to be cheerful in this world. In this sad, sad world. And then we can still rejoice. And so in this message tonight, allow me to preach to you. Rejoice again. Rejoice again. I don't know about you. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what, what, your, what your problem is. I don't know what your situation is. But I would like to submit to you the message. Rejoice again. Rejoice again. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. For those who are living for God, are we glad that uh, we have the God who um, we found the secret of, of great joy, the real joy, genuine joy, unspeakable joy. Amen. And because of that, we have all, we have all the reasons to rejoice. Amen. Our rejoicing is not because of the things that we possess in this world. But because of the things of God, we rejoice. It is not because of what we, what we are and what we have physically, but what we have spiritually in God. Not because of the temporal things, but because of the eternal things that God promised to us, we rejoice in those things. Amen? Praise God, it's a joy to be a Christian, we sing that at church. It's a joy to be a Christian. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's a joy to be a Christian, it's a joy. Kaysaya maging Christiano, kaysaya. Mula lunes, martes, miércoles, jueves, viernes, sábado, lingo, kaysaya, maging Christiano, kaysaya. Amen. Because it is true for us living in God, we have this joy in our hearts. Mr. Billy Sunday said, if you have no joy in your religion, there is a leak in your Christianity. There is something wrong in that Christianity because a Christian life should be a cheerful life. The missing thing in a lot of churches today is real, genuine Christian joy. Sad to say in a lot of Christian, in a lot of churches today, joy is in programs. Joy is in gimmicks. It's a put on. It's a makeup. 
But there's nothing better than the original. We don't want makeups. Amen. We want the original. We don't want fake joy. We don't want to put on the mask of counterfeit joy. Amen. We want to be real. Amen. We want to, we want to show to the world what we have inside of us. And so we have this Christian joy. Let me borrow this illustration I heard from my Nino, Pastor Jesse in Venezuela. If that's okay, let me just copy it right. There was a pastor who was, who was serious of um, having revival in church. Probably not a Pentecostal pastor because um, he was thinking of something else. He doesn't know about real uh, Holy Ghost experience. And so he thought, how are we uh, going to have a, um, a rejoicing in the church or the spirit move in the church? And um, so he thought about something. Oh, the dove is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And so he called his, um, his uh, son and said, hey, um, we have an idea on Sunday, we're going to have to do a Holy Spirit move um, in the service. And uh, we're going to have to do it, you know, with a symbol of the Holy Spirit, the dove. Kalapati, mga kapati. Kunan mo ko ng kalapating puti. Get me a white dog. And I want you to, uh, to go up in the ceiling. And uh, while I'm preaching, I will give you a signal. When you hear me say, and the Holy Ghost is coming down, that's the signal that you will release the dog from up from the ceiling. You will receive, you will release the dog. And so when, when the people will see the dog, and I will mention about the move of the Holy Spirit, and then we're going to have a good, a good service, a good uh, uh, spirit, Holy Spirit illustration. So the son said, that's simple, Father. And so Sunday morning, there he was up there in the ceiling and with a dog coming in his hands. And the pastor, the dad was preaching and then came the signal and the Holy Ghost is coming down. Nothing, nothing's happening. And the Holy Ghost is coming down and second signal and still no, no Holy Spirit. And then they heard some, some rumbling in the ceiling and made another signal and the Holy Ghost is coming down! And then, and then the son shouted, Father, the cat ate the Holy Ghost! <laughs> I love that joke. Our joy is in the Holy Ghost experience. Not in programs, not in gimmicks, not in makeups. Pentecost is real. No matter what they say, Pentecost is real. I'm by my spirit sealed. I love it's not a way. Pentecost is real. I'm by my spirit sealed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I know, I know it's real. Hallelujah! Our God is the uh, source of joy. Amen. We find it in the Word of God, Jeremiah 15, 16. Thy words have, were found and I did eat them. And thy word was sent to me the joy and rejoicing in my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. We find it also in worship. Nehemiah 12, 43, also that day they offered great sacrifices and rejoiced, for God had made them rejoice with great joy. The wives also and the children rejoiced, so that the joy of Jerusalem was heard of even afar off. We find it also in the kingdom of God, Romans 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah! The kingdom of this world live only for the meat and drink. 
But they do not have the righteousness and peace. And the most important thing is the joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Most people in this world, they, they have this great need of material things. And seeking these material things for what they need, only in what they can eat, and what they can drink, and what they can clothe. Amen. Worldly things. And they're looking for this joy in the world. But I, I know of no greater joy today than the need for joy, unspeakable and an unexplainable joy, and contagious joy. You know, when that joy, when that joy comes to our life, it brings good things with it, like enthusiasm for life, like determination, to hang in there and, and to be of encouragement to others. Because we have that glow, that, that uh, Holy Spirit glow that, that is manifesting in our faces. Amen. There is nothing better than, than a joyful attitude when we face the challenges that life throws at us. Yung tumutukun tayo mga kapatid ng, ng mayroong pa rin kagalakan at kasiyahan sa kabila ng mga pagsusubok na dumarating sa ating buhay. Unfortunately, the world that we live in have lost its spirit of fun and the spirit of laughter. Just look around and all we see in the headlines, they're all bad news. They said in the newspaper, the only thing that's correct is the date. Sometimes it's not even correct. But it's a sad, sad world. You see everywhere sad faces and heavy hearts in every corner. Newspapers are filled with tragedies and calamities and lost jobs and horrible accidents. Terrorisms everywhere. Could it have? Go out there and try to search for signs of true happiness. Kung hanapin mo ang ang uh, palatandaan ng mga tunay na kasiyan at kagalakan, if you would look at them in the world, out there in the world, guess what you get? What you get is disappointments. What you get is frustrations. What you get is heartaches. This is how this world responds to you. Another failure, another disappointment, another heartache. But I know one place on earth where life's burden should be lighter, where faces should reflect genuine enthusiasm, and where attitudes should be uplifting and positive. This place is the holy place where the presence of God dwells. In His presence is fullness of joy. At His right hand is pleasure forevermore. We find this real joy not in any place in the world out there, but in the presence of God. And this is not just a simple joy. This is not the same as when you receive your paycheck, you have a good smile. This is not when you meet your Prince Charming and you have a good smile. No, the Bible said when you are in the presence of God, this is fullness, complete, 100% joy. Clap your hands to the Lord. If we want this kind of joy, we've got to get into the presence of God. And how do we get into the presence of God? Of course, we need to create an atmosphere of praise and worship. Amen. Hallelujah. Get through that spirit realm and, and then and get hold of, of um, what God is doing and get into the center of, of the will of God and in the presence of God. Amen. We just sang that song, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Hallelujah. One of my favorite songs by Clint Brown, Time I Spent With You. He said, I've been many places, seen important phases, and done things I never thought I'd do. Nothing compares to the time I spent with you. And then he said, in this busy life of mine, time is so hard to find. But I found out that every time I do, nothing compares to the time I spend with you. 
There's nothing compares when you find yourself in the presence of God. You can pray, you can do your homework and compare what you feel in the things that you get in the world and the things that you get in the presence of God. Hallelujah! And then do your comparison, do your homework. You put in column A, drugs compared to the, to the spirit, laughter. Amen. Alcohol compared to the to the uh, what you get when you get drunk in the Holy Ghost. Amen. A cigarette compared to what you feel in the presence of God. Amen. All these things do your homework, and then I challenge you and compare to one another. Nothing compares when you spend your time in the presence of God. Because in His presence is fullness of joy. At His right hand, there is pleasure forevermore. This world has been looking and looking and searching for what would fill up the emptiness and the cravings of their heart to get that complete joy and satisfaction for their soul. They couldn't find it. Amen. Because they're all partial. They're all temporary. Amen. Pansamantara lamang mga kapatid. Pantaraya lamang. Counterfeit joy. But if they can only be in this type of gathering right now, if we have visitors tonight, I would like you to feel something in the Holy Ghost. You will never feel this outside. You will never feel this in drugs and alcohol and secrets and gangs and discos and parties out there. Because this joy that you feel, the presence of God, this is full and complete. This is what you've been looking for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The command for joy in Philippians chapter 4 verse 4, it says rejoice. In the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Hallelujah. When we look at this verse. Rejoice. Oh it's easy to rejoice when uh, we're having a good time here. It's easy to uh, uh, have fun with other believers and Christians and our friends. Amen. Hallelujah. We sing good songs and, and praise and worship songs. And, and uh, it's good to uh, celebrate the goodness of God and we feel good. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord. But it says always. And then another phrase comes. And again, I say, rejoice. Now brother, last someone is this conditional. I say no. Because the writer of this verse, the Apostle Paul, when he was writing this in Philippians 4 verse 4, he was in jail. Amen. He was, he was suffering. He was struggling. He don't have fellowship with the believers. He don't have family there. He don't have friends in there. There's no church in there. He was in prison, but he could still rejoice. Like the first time when, when he was with Silas in Acts chapter 16, we remember. They were beating up. They were bruised and hurting and they're in pain. But they started realizing, hey, joy does not determine what we feel physically. It determines what we have inside of us. And that's the joy in the Holy Ghost. And they started singing, and there was an earthquake. And the ground was shaken, and the doors were opened, and all the bands were loosed. Amen. Freedom, not only physically, but spiritually, can only be obtained. If we have joy in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Happiness depends on the outward condition. But joy depends on the inward and the depths of our soul. It depends on the Holy Ghost. Jesus said in John 7, 37, On the day of the great feast in Jerusalem, He stood and cried out, saying, If any man thirst, 
Let him come unto me and drink. He that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water from the depths of our heart. Amen. From the bottom of our heart. Hallelujah. From the inward comes the flow of the Spirit of God. It's like rivers of living water. You will never thirst again. Joy is inward. In the depths of our heart. And that's the refreshing that we get in the Holy Ghost. We love to shout and dance. And rejoice only in the face of victory. We sing loud. We lift our voices. We jump and we run the aisle with excitement. And you know what? That's very easy to do. It's easy to dance when, when you just got your paycheck. It's easy to smile when your stomach is full. It's easy to rejoice when everything is well and it's going smooth in your life. But do you have what it takes to rejoice again after you've been in the valley of trials for a while? Can you shout with joy when you're going through some rough times? Can you dance again with a big problem standing on your way? Can you rejoice again in the middle of sufferings? Can you run the aisle again when you're overshadowed with fear? Can you jump in worship when only one fourth of attendance in church shows up? Can you praise God when you don't feel like it? Can you worship and have church when everybody stays home? Can you shout and rejoice again when people are leaving church? Do you have what it takes to overcome these trials? And I have good news for you. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Ang kalakasan ng Panginoon ang nagbibigay sa atin ng kalakasan. Kagalakan ng Panginoon. Hallelujah! Na masusuntungan natin sa kanyang banal na presensya. Kung tayo ay nagtitipon o kung tayo ay nagpupuri, nananalangin at sumasamba, and we spend time in the presence of God, you have what it takes to shout and dance and, and rejoice again, even if you're going through some rough times. Ephesians 3.20, it says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power, the power that works in us, the power of the Holy Ghost that gives us joy. No matter what you can, or what you can think of, he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all. And it's depending on what we have inside. Uh -huh. yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is not conditional. And it is also continuing. It says rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. My mother-in-law, she's a third. Um, 89 years of age and she's been battling cancer since 1994 so let's do the math that's 11 years right multiple myeloma one of the most painful cancer and the bone marrow for 11 years she has this cancer but if you can just see her, if you, have, if you will have a chance to see her. Pastor Valenzuela, you've seen her time and time again in church services. Pastor Ben Pants, you know who I'm talking about. Amen. She's been having this cancer for 11 years and most of these uh, uh, cancer patients, they don't, they don't even last for a year. But uh, it's been 11 years now, and if you will see her in church, even if even uh, not in church, amen, you will go to her bedroom, 
and then and open her closet, you will find her joy. Amen. You'll find her Bible open and her table, and, and you you will find you'll find in her closet the, the, the dresses that she wants to wear in church. There is one for this Sunday, there's one for the next Sunday, there's one for the next coming Sunday, there's one for next month Sunday. Amen. He, she's got a lot of dresses, amen. But they all they all have schedules because her joy is living for God. Amen. Her joy is to be serving God whenever you see her in church. Amen. Now she's in wheelchair. But even in the wheelchair, you cannot stop her from worshiping and rejoicing in the Lord. It doesn't matter what pain she's going through. It doesn't matter what trials and what suffering she's going through. But the joy, the joy of the Holy Ghost, you can see it in her face. And she's always the first one to ignite revival in the church service. The starter of worship. The starter of rejoicing. The one whose head is rejoicing back then when, when, she, when she came to church and when she got afflicted with cancer again and again and again. Her rejoicing is continuing. Amen. Hallelujah. Very encouraging. Because some people will just will just throw their heads up and throw their towel in and it's been eleven years I've been praying and worshiping and, and there's there's nothing like uh, like how I worship and how I rejoice in every single church service and I'm still here a cancer patient and not healed yet. Hallelujah. But that doesn't matter. Amen. She's not looking at what her, what her condition physically is. What she can see is the pressure in her earthen vessel. Amen. And she has the reason to rejoice because God, the love of God and the Holy Ghost is moving so strong and blessing her life. Hallelujah. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. It's good to rejoice when everything, everything is smooth. My wife, just two months ago, she was diagnosed with a lump, something in, in, the, in, the, in the throat. And uh, so the doctor advised her that um, her whole thyroid will be removed. And um, so it's been a little over two months now and after that thyroid was already been removed, she couldn't sing in church. Before the surgery, you would hear her all the time, every day, not even, not even in church service, but at home. Whenever she's at home, she's cranking the piano and singing and rejoicing and praising God. Amen. In the church, she's the leader and, and, and um, she sings and rejoices. And, you know, you can see the joy in her face whenever she, she's doing this ministry, the gift that God gave, gave to her to sing. Amen. But since she had a surgery, everybody missed her singing in church. She couldn't sing. Every time she tries, nothing's coming out. It's a harsh voice. Ah, ah. She gets so frustrated sometimes. Amen. I could feel what she feel and it's difficult for me because one thing that she loved the most in serving God is to be able to use the gift and the talent that God gave to her to give God the glory. Yes. Amen. As she sings. She couldn't sing, but the doctor promised that she can sing again. But she don't want to wait for that day. Amen. Even in that condition, she tries. It's not, it's not good music anymore, but she still tries. It's not a pleasant tone anymore, but she still cries. Amen. And it didn't stop her from, uh, from spending time in God and, and praying to God and doing things faithfully to God. 
Amen. It even it even helped her improve her um, her dedication to the Lord. Every morning, five o'clock, we we are doing this tilaw. Uh, five o'clock crow, you know, the tilaw sa masingo. Are you still doing that? Amen. Amen. We still do that every morning, five o'clock. The alarm. Uh, will sun off and and uh, time to rise up and and she will hold my hand and and then we start we start praying but you can see she's humming and, and trying to sing and there's rejoicing is still there amen some people they will just stop doing I can't I can't even do it I can't even sing I, I can't even do it the way I was doing it but nothing stops her from what she wants to do. Amen. Even if, if it doesn't sound good, she rejoices again and again and again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like the word although. In Tagalog, it's kahit na maskina. Because this word is always predicated with the word yet. Or in Tagalog, gayun paman, or munit. Although, and yet. Kahit na tayo ay nagpapasakit, gayun paman ay nagpupuri pa rin tayo sa Panginoon. Kahit na tayo ay walang pera, gayun paman nagpapatuloy pa rin tayo sa paglilingkod sa Panginoon. Maski na tayo ay may sakit, gayon pa man ay tinuluwalhati pa rin natin ang Panginoon sa ating karamdaman. Maski na tayo ay dumadaan sa maraming pagsubok, gayon pa man, nagagalak pa rin tayo sa Panginoon. Sapagkat ang kagalakan ng Panginoon ay ang ating kalakasan. Musicians Complex. Habakkuk 3, 17 to 18, it says, Although, the fig tree shall not blossom. Neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fall. And the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. And there shall be no herd in the stall. Yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Have a good you are bankrupt. Wala ka nang hina-harvest. Wala nang naman ang iyong bukit. Wala nang iyong hayupan. Wala ka nang dapat pang ipagpuri sa Panginoon. Wala ka nang kayamanan. You have nothing left anymore. Have a good. But have a good, Sam. Although all these things are gone, yet I will rejoice in the Lord and I will joy. in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Although we are troubled on every side, yet we are not distressed. Although we are perplexed, not yet we are not in despair. Although we are persecuted, yet we are not forsaken. Although we are cast down, yet we are not destroyed. My God, Seven and eight, rejoice not against me, O oh, my enemy. Though I fall, yet I will rise again. Never. It's not a good time right now. 
Amen.